your empowerment guide with a camp counselor vibe, and I'm here with another episode of the Empowered Creator Podcast. This is a co-creative podcast where you are invited to create right alongside us. In this episode, we'll be exploring our connection with nature to heal, expand, and grow. So please share your perspectives on the topics covered in the comments so we can all co-create this podcast together, and you can also submit your own creations to be featured in future episodes. Remember, your moment-to-moment choices are your creations. All right, here's the episode. It's Create With Wit time. This is the part of the podcast where I invite you to join me in an empowering activity. Whether you're listening to this or watching the video, I encourage you to take a moment to participate and see what happens. This meditation is meant to assist humanity with stepping more fully into a love frequency. If you're interested in practicing non-judgment and having a positive impact on yourself and others, please join me. To start, You can close your eyes or keep them open during this practice. You might also be like me where standing and moving around is more aligned for you rather than sitting in stillness. Honor yourself and do what feels best in this moment. Today we're practicing widening our perspective with love. Sometimes it can be easy to stay zoomed in on our own perspective and dismiss or look down upon others with differing perspectives. This can cause division and disharmony. With this practice, let's see if we can hold love for ourselves, our own perspective, and others as well. Let's start very zoomed in on our own perspective. Imagine yourself and all of your thoughts and beliefs, and hold love for yourself in this moment. This could be an image that comes up for you, a feeling, an emotion. Allow whatever comes up to represent love of self and be present with it. Next, we're going to zoom out a bit to the people in your life that you get along with most. These are the people you know their perspectives are closer in line with yours. You have similar ideas and belief systems. These are also the fur babies and animals you have in your home. We hold love for them now. Now we will pull out farther and think about the folks in your neighborhood or town and the trees and birds and creatures who live there. You know or see some of them a little bit, but not all of them. We might hold similar perspectives and beliefs to some of these people and beings, And some have pretty different ideas than us. Maybe politically or religiously or countless other things are or are not aligned. We're just holding them in our minds and we're holding love for them as well. Next, we zoom out even further, and there are people across the country from you that don't have much of a clue the way you live in your own town or city because they live in a totally different area. The landscapes may be very different as the weather allows for different plants to grow and creatures to live there. They have different kinds of restaurants and entertainment as well. Maybe still similar enough because you're in the same country, but possibly very different. You're holding love for them now. Now we're going to zoom out the farthest yet, to people across the world in places that if you haven't traveled to or heard much about, you would have no idea how they go about their lives. Maybe you don't even know what these lands look like or what animals live there. Or maybe there are certain places you have heard a lot about and you have certain thoughts or judgments about them. We're going to hold love for them as well. Now for the most important part of this practice. Notice what comes up for you during all of this. 
The point of this empowering activity and meditation isn't to take on anyone else's perspectives or say anyone is better or worse or right or wrong or good or bad. The point is to practice just a slight sliver of what unconditional love could feel and be like. How was that for you? Take a moment to pause to write or voice record what came up during this active meditation. I can't stress enough how important reflecting is right now. This is the actual inner work that so many people talk about. So be honest with yourself and love those parts of you that showed up that need more of your attention right now. Thanks for co-creating with me, everyone. Love to you. It's Create Music Time, everyone. If you've watched any of the other episodes, you might have noticed that typically I have a musician that comes on and they talk about their experience with creating music. But on this episode, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Because we've got this nature theme going on, I couldn't think of a better guest than Mother Nature herself and animal friends to share their music with us. Now, Before I share the clips, I want to say that I asked permission to record and put this on the podcast. I personally think it's important that I don't take without asking and without gratitude. So I am so, so grateful for the songs I was able to record this day in Jacksonville, Oregon. The Create Healing segment of the podcast is here, everyone, and we've got Amalia with us today. Amalia spreads love and unity consciousness through sharing channeled tree meditations, public speaking, kundalini reiki, astral surgery, and crystal aura and chakra alignment energy healing. Her mission is to hold space as a channel of light and bridge between higher realms to share tools, messages, life force energy, and information for others to tune in and experience the collective unity consciousness of love. While you listen to our conversation, here are some questions to ponder, and you can also answer them in the comments as well. When was the last time you hugged a tree, and what was it like? And who wants to go to the nature sanctuary for their May celebration? Seriously, though, I am going to do everything I can to make it down there, so if anyone wants to go, comment and we can all meet up and hang out. All right, here's my conversation with Amalia. Welcome, welcome to the Empowered Creator Podcast. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to have you here. (laughs) Hi, hi, Wit, and hi, everyone that's watching and tuning in. It's an honor to be with you guys. To start, trees. Oh my goodness, because you do tree meditations, you do guided tree meditations, and I guess to start, like, what is your connection with trees? Like, how did that all get started? (laughs) Well, I grew up in a nature sanctuary, and there's a lot of oak trees here. And I would always find myself playing under them, climbing them. You know, as a kid does, being with the trees, having a swing there, and just looking up at at the leaves and the branches. And there's, like, this cool moss that grows on it. And just was always very, like... I felt so safe. I felt so connected with the trees and like my safe spot. But it wasn't until about three years ago now when I was really developing my psychic abilities and I started to channel the tree spirit, which um, I connected with the Arturians. I don't know if you are aware, but yeah. Okay. Well, the Arturians, it is said that they were one of the races that donated to earth the planet earth um if you're familiar with dolores canyon and her theory about 
Earth being a, a library, right? Well, yep. the Victorians donated a lot of the trees and a lot of the plant medicines like cannabis, ayahuasca, beautiful plants like this, and the trees. Mm -hmm. And I'm very connected with the Arturians. I channel them way before I started doing the trees. And so when yeah. it happened that I was able to channel the trees, feel the trees, have out-of-body experiences, see sacred geometry, see the trees aura, wow. all of this, I was like, I started to look deeper and deeper into it. And I was like, okay, there's so much lost history here from the high priestess, like, so many stories, right, from Greece and or like the tree of life. Why is the tree of life everywhere, right? And yeah. correlating like things from the from the Bible to things from science to there's TED Talks. There are so many scientists that have been doing this research. And a really cool thing that I like that I want to get is this device called Plant Wave. And it, I mean, I don't, yeah, right. It I've connects. Heard of it, but feel free to tell people about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you can imagine hearing what it sounds like, what a tree or what a plant sounds like without having that telepathy, well, mm -hmm. that's this device. That's what it does. You connect it to any plant life and it plays a song based on the binaural beats that that plant is emanating. So it's so very, cool. very cool stuff. So cool. I love it. I want one too. <laughs> it sounds, yeah, you have this like past with your childhood and playing under trees and all that beautiful. I also grew up not in a nature sanctuary, but also was around uh, trees a lot and climbing trees. I mean, even when I tap into my inner child, I just the other day I was wearing my like raccoon onesie and was like, I'm going to go for a walk in my raccoon onesie. And then there was a tree that was just beckoning me to climb her. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm this rack, a furry raccoon onesie climbing this tree right now. And you know, it just, there's so much fun and play, but also there's deep uh, messages as well. Like you were saying that you channel these messages. I'd love to just hear a little bit more about what that feels like for you. Cause everyone kind of channels and, um, brings forth information in different ways. So what does it feel like for you when you're doing that? Right. Well, first of all, I was picturing you climbing the tree in your onesie <laughs> and that looks super fun. And, um, on yep, that note, yep. Like doing that stuff is it's a primal thing, right? Reconnecting back to those roots of our ancestors of that was life. You know, people had to, for example, climb trees to safety, right? From some animals at the bottom. So it's like, it's awesome that we're still able to do that to this day. Maybe not for that same reason, but sure. it, it's a connection to that ancestral life of ours. Um yes. But with receiving messages from the trees, there's like the basic things that we can all kind of see ourselves with. For example, right, like the basics of the tree, the roots represent your literal roots, your values, what do you stand for? The trunk of the tree is, you know, who you are and that centeredness and how you're nurturing yourself, right? The branches is like the different routes of life and the leaves is like every possibility and your relations and all those beautiful things that make you you. And yeah. so not only from that or from a seasonal view of what the trees teach us, because also every tree has its own um, energy, it has its own medicine right literal trees are medicine so much of our medicine comes from different trees but yes. aside all of that logistical stuff mm -hmm. how it feels to receive the energy whenever i share a tree meditation i share this first starting point you may start to feel tingling sensations kind of like an electrical currents because yeah. you are activating that you're working we're working with your Merkaba, we're working with all the chakras, we're working with so much Kundalini energy, right? Kundalini being the energy from Mother Earth as well from our body and mm -hmm. connecting all of that. It's whew, you start to feel all that current flow yep. through through you. And so I tell people, if you start to feel yourself kind of like a battery, it's because you're being charged up, literally. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Or I tell them, hey, you know, you might 
all of a sudden want to cry. People see colors. So kind of like if you were in a Reiki session, you can see all the colors and they'll be like changing and morphing and bright. And I personally, I see a lot of a very deep or neon green and like a neon blue when I'm with the trees and, and violet um, or white. It's very beautiful. But outside of seeing the colors, feeling your feelings, sensing the sensations, I see them as ascendant masters, right? I see them as, you know, they're ever, they're so centered in their meditation and, and they're literally the lungs of earth, but they're also the pillars of light, right? Because photosynthesis, if we look at photosynthesis from a energetic standpoint, the trees, the plants are receiving light codes, yeah. light codes, <laughs> and anchoring yeah. that into our earth, and then communicating that through their micronial, my, micros, mycorrhizal network, right, all over the world. So it's like, yeah. what? That's happening below our feet, and we can tap into it by being barefoot or by be putting our hands on the tree and just taking a few deep breaths. So yeah. that's kind of the experience there. When you're like leading folks who like maybe have never, ever done this, <laughs> is is there a specific kind of way that you like to start with the trees? I guess I'm just thinking about in general, anytime I go for a walk, even in a hike, and I'm not necessarily intending to connect with a specific tree, but I'm like very intentional with, I'm here, like I'm walking beside you. I'm not here to trod over you. Like I'm kind of setting intention for like equal ground, but- I'm just curious of like in your personal practice or practice when you're leading, do you have any of that type of thing that you do? Absolutely. So before I go into a tree meditation, I kind of give like a 10 to 15 minute introduction where I share essentially what I just shared right now. And sure. I go into some of those lessons and I tell them, expect to feel this, expect this is what's going to happen. Right. Yeah, yeah. And from doing that talk, I answer any questions that they might have. Um, and from there, I really like opening ceremonies with a four directions, which is actually a seven directions calling. I don't know if you've heard of this. It's very indigenous. Um, I've learned this from, you know, the many ceremonies that I've grown up going to. And it really makes it, it's exactly what you're saying, because it gives the participants that time and mind space to settle into hey I'm about to experience something and I'm getting my mind body and spirit ready for that we're connecting to you know north south east west the guardians of the land we're asking that we're taking that moment to ask for permission to ask them like hey we honor you, we hear you, and we're just here to spend some time with you. And if you would like, you can show yourselves to us. Please work with us. And um, with respect, we're here. And that really allows the people to have that time to be like, okay, this is a ceremony. This is, we're not just going to listen to her talk and we're going to meditate. Like, no, it's deeper than that, right? Have you gotten feedback about some of the like, benefits that you've experienced from it what have you experienced in your own life like obviously this is something that you incorporate and you do a lot are there any things that you can like oh yes this is kind of how you feel how I've seen myself feel afterwards or a week from now or whatever it happens to be absolutely there's a science behind it which I didn't grasp at the start but now I do and sure. essentially right the tree bark it releases a chemical that is antidepressant all trees have the same chemical. The soil has this chemical, right? And so when we talk about we're having a grounding experience, that's a science. Science is happening there. We are transferring ions. There's a chemical reaction happening that is literally the reason why we feel so good, right? So yeah. hugging trees releases, I believe, dopamine. Yes, dopamine. Dopamine is our happy chemical. So you mix the dopamine with the antidepressant smell. Right there is the primary reason. Well, I would say the scientific chemical reason for why people are able to feel so good. 
I've experienced this whenever I I can be dramatic sometimes and being here with so much nature sometimes I picture myself like I'm a little you know fairy princess and I go to the trees and I like talk to them or sometimes I cry under them I sing to them I write my poems I'm like I just feel so much right now and then like once <laughs> yeah. I'm done you know going through my process then I I feel a lot better and that could just be from venting yes but when you mix all of the aspects together right like it gives you that support it gives you the support that you need from community and so for people mm -hmm. the feedback that I've received a lot is like hey before I started to do the tree meditation I didn't like First, some people don't even feel confident, right, to go hug a tree because, oh, I'm going to be judged as a tree hugger. Like, that looks weird. And so that's its own thing. I have to tell people, like, hey, you inspire people to hug trees yeah. when you hug a tree. And it doesn't matter what other people think. You know you're going to feel better, so go hug the tree, you know? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so people, it, it increases that confidence, right, to be able to do things that are out of the norm. It allows people to have that moment of relaxation, to reconnect with Mother Nature, to expand their consciousness, to ground their energy, and to be able to tap in further to their divine aspects, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really, if someone wants to go to the tree because they're too quantum and they need grounding, that's mm -hmm. going to happen. If you're too grounded and you want to be more you know, have more experiences, quantum experiences, you can do that with the tree. So it works either way. If you are overthinking and you need to center, do a grounding tree meditation and come back into your center, you know, there's so many different ways that the tree really aids everyone. But wherever you are, if you want to go to a tree and you don't know what you need or what, don't worry about it. The tree is going to show you. It's going yeah. to do its work with you for your best needs. The more I receive is they're more interconnected with Mother Nature. They're more loving. They're more respecting. They're more eco-conscious, right? And um, that's, that's really the goal with sharing the tree meditations is to help people reconnect with unity consciousness, with Mother Nature, and with their own spirituality right yes oh it's beautiful i know you do so many other things too and the, the and where you um work and the work you do beyond tree meditation so if you want to talk about more of that because i would love for people to hear um we just barely touched on what you do because i know you do so many things so if you want to explain a little bit more about all the things that you do i'd love to hear okay um uh, well don't mind if i do then yes, i can share yes. with you guys <laughs> um right so before i started to lead the tree meditations i got my certification which in kundalini reiki i'm a master level i can certify others which that there's a whole thing that I've learned as well in it's a lot of times people that take certifications for anything to do with healing is we already do it, but we need the certification as a permission slip to open up even more into it. Right. And so you can self attune yourself. You don't have to go and receive an attunement. Like for example, you can attune yourself into the tree realm, into Kundalini Reiki without having to come to me, right? However, it is a shortcut to have those teachers. So I did that and that opened up my brain like anything else. You know, I started to have those Kundalini moments and that is what really propelled me to be able to hear and communicate the with the trees. Outside of Kundalini Reiki, I also have a certification with crystal healing and aura healing. I have one as well for astral surgeries. I most my most recent one is with the Akashic Records, so now I'm certified to open the Akasha, uh, which again is all some things that I've I can already do. And with the Akasha, I'm really excited to use that more during the tree meditation because now I now I'm even more right so that's really cool now aside all of that stuff happening um my biggest thing that I love to do is to organize retreats I have so much fun when I'm in person and we're doing all these things and it's literally like oh 
Now we're going to go meditate with the tree. Now we're going to go yes. hike. Now we're going to go do a sound bath. Now we're going to receive one-on-one sessions. And it's just like, that's my jam right there. I invite everyone. This is a free event coming up here at the sanctuary. We're in Tecate, Baja California, Mexico. May 24 to 26, we're having Danza La Madre Tierra, which translates to Dance for Mother Earth. It's a indigenous style ceremonial dance where there's a giant drum in the center and we're in a circle and we're doing essentially energy work as we're going around and with each step you know we're giving back to or we're letting go to mother nature and then we're receiving with all the energy work that's happening so aside the dance that happens they have holistic healers which i'll be one of them and it's all donation based um, so you can expect anything from a chiropractor, Reiki, tarot, numerology, all for free, donation base. Not only that, though, the best part is the Temascal. Now, I don't know if you know what Temascal. Yes, the Temascal is a ceremonial sweat lodge, and um, that is the strongest medicine that I I love. Um, yes, yes, she agrees. She agrees with Temascal. <laughs> Um, and that happens for three days, twice a day, the wow. whole thing for free. So if you guys want to make it out to that, I highly suggest that's like, honestly, I see that event as my new year's party, you know, because it's like, it's a party. It's, we're doing energy work where we're working, but it's a party. It's a new earth party for me. The final thing I can invite you guys to is in August. August 11th to 13th, here again at the Sanctuary, we're going to have Vibra Fest, which translates to Vibes Fest, and it's going to be a medicine music festival, again, for three days. And that one, there's like a three-tier ticket option for you guys to choose from, but you don't want to miss it. So I yes. hope to see you guys there. Oh, cool. Oh, my gosh. Y'all are putting on some real fun events. I'm in... Um... Oregon at the moment, but I um, travel and I, every month I'm in a different spot. I'm just kind of bopping around wherever I, I work remote. So I'm just bopping around. And so I might make my way down farther and farther South and be like, let's go. It's time. It's time to dance and heal and party. And yes, I also know that you have some fun t-shirts if you want to show people the t-shirts. Aside from all that stuff I just mentioned, we do have a product line here at Lagunitas. Let me show you. Um, first, we'll start by showing you guys the t-shirts. This this is part of the treatmentation tour. So I saw that there was the shirt. I really wanted it and it was not in the market. So I said, we need to make that happen. So here's what You're it looks like. like. I'm going to create my own. Ah, it's so good. It says tree hugger, and let me read it to you. It says, um, tree hugger, someone who practices hugging trees to connect to its energy, nature lover, green activist, recognizes trees as conscious beings. Yeah. So that's one. Yes. And this is our other one. And the back is mm. this. So this oh. one says, love your planet how you love yourself the tree meditation tour and oh, nice. now for our main products we got lagunitas organics aromatherapy linen pillows now this is the small version this one is trending right now this is about four pounds of pure rosemary lavender and sage everything that um she talked about will be in the links in the description i really like to make sure that Anybody I talk to, um, people can find what you're up to, what you're creating, all those good things. Cause there's so much, there's so much there. Even if people aren't able to make it physically to your location, they can still engage with what you're doing in some way. Another thing that we do here at Lagunitas is we make these. Now this one is burnt, obviously, but this sure. is called an R01. Now you probably have seen these as smudge sticks and sure. usually it's just sage or other plants. But this one is a very special blend that we make that has rosemary, lavender, yerba santa, and sage. That when I make these or when I fill the pillows, it's a ceremony day for me. I, you know, I go in and I'm with the plant realm and we're working and we're putting Kundalini Reiki energy into all the products. So that's why you can feel so like a calm sense from them. 
Um, but yeah, the R01s are available on the Lagunitas Organic site as well, if you guys are interested in that. And that's the way to bring the sanctuary into your house, right? Thank you so, so much for sharing everything that you did. And I'm just, I'm so grateful that you exist and we are on the same <laughs> earth experiencing all of this together. Uh, gosh, it's amazing. Feeling a bit stuck? Not sure what steps to take to embody more of your most authentic and powerful self? The Empowered Mindset course follows the workbook of the same name for a full year of affirmations and empowering activities. For less than 85 cents a week, you get 52 videos of wit walking alongside you to a more empowered mindset, plus five additional videos of bonus activities that aren't in the workbook. Healing and growth don't have to be so serious all the time. Although you can choose that path if you want to, Wit uses play, joy, and creativity to guide to a more empowered mindset. So if that sounds exciting, you can find more information and sign up at empowered-projects.com. Woo, have you seen the Create and Spiral merch that Wit has been wearing? The ones with the aqua, teal, purple, and magenta colors popping? Well, there's a whole shop available full of different options for you to choose from. Hats, hoodies, t-shirts, bags, stickers, and more. Each sale helps Wit continue making the podcast better and better, and also assist with spreading the word so even more powerful creators can join us as we create the world we want to see. Go to empowered-projects.com slash shop to check it out. It's Create Connection time, everyone. This episode, we've got Nina here to share about animal communication and connecting with domestic and wild animals alike. Nina is an animal communicator and pet medium, working with people who would like to connect with animals who are living or in spirit. She has had a heart for animals from a young age and loves the work she does, as you'll hear throughout the conversation. So while you listen, here are some questions to consider. What questions do you have for the animals in your life? And what have you learned from the animals around you? All right, it's combo time starting right now. Hello, hello, Nina. Hello, how are Welcome you? Welcome to the Empowered Creator Podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Woohoo, me too. This particular uh, segment of the podcast is typically done with a, a couple that talks about creating connection as far as like human connection. And then we talk about creating connection with ourselves. But I really thought it would be fun and super important to talk about creating connection with animals because they just make up so much of our world. And I was like, yes, this this needs to happen. So I'm so excited that you're here to chat with us about animal communication and all of that good stuff. Yeah, I'm really excited too. I think it's an important topic. So speaking of animal communication, I like to start off by not assuming that everyone that's engaging with the podcast knows and is on the same page. So yeah. to just start off, what does that even mean to you? What does animal communication mean to you? And then we can go from there. I think it's a really great question. Um, and I think if you ask a couple of communicators, they all might say different things. So this will be what it means to me. Um, yes. <laughs> I grew up um, not having the best childhood. Um and or the environment I lived in and animals were just always my safe space. I found the ones that were like chained up or in the yard and I was like, I'm going to be this animal's friend. Um, and that kind of bled into my um, teenage years, my adulthood, and I just always felt safe with the animals. So it's no surprise that I grew up to be a vet tech. Um, but I grew up to be a vet tech working with animals who are victims of cruelty. So I didn't just work at a shelter. These animals were needing to be rehabilitated for all different kinds of things. And what I learned from them was healing. So that's what animal communication means to me is to not just heal with the animals, but to heal with yourself because they were showing me that they could go from really, truly like unremarkably sad experiences and abuse to just the happiest animals and not holding grudges against anyone or anything. And I took, you know, the steps to learn how to do animal communication even further. And I learned that um, some of the agreements that we have with our animals is for them to trigger things in us or to push us to do certain things to heal, to learn your lessons. So that's what animal communication means to me is not just like, oh, my dog really loves this bone. It's like, why the heck is my dog being really annoying today? Or why doesn't she really like this person? And then what does that bring up in me and, and things like that? It goes way deeper than that. But 
that's what it means to me is healing with your animals, which is healing and connection, essentially. I like that kind of definition for yourself and, and yeah. kind of how you came came to that. As far as like making the leap from vet tech and being around animal, like how did you take that step to animal communication? Because a lot of people never go there. They don't take that step. And a lot of people don't even know it's a thing. Yeah. Um, so how did you even? <laughs> yeah, no, decide? I didn't know it was a thing either. Um, I had no belief system. I just believed you lived and you died. And that was terrifying to me. I had a huge fear of death for a really long time. And it got really high uh, in my later 20s. And I was in therapy for it. And it was like paralyzing. And I was like, you know what, therapy, I love therapy. I'm still in therapy. I was like, I love it. But like, what more can I do outside of therapy to get comfortable with the idea of death and what happens after you die? And I was like, uh, you know, I don't really believe in that, but I'll, I'll look at a medium and see what happens. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, they say like anybody can do it. All right. I'll take a class for fun. <laughs> and then before I knew it, I was like, oh, like I'm talking to dead people and these classmates are talking to my dead people. And so I did human mediumship for about six months, just taking lots of classes, practicing with friends and yeah. still doing my vet tech jam. And then I came across a medium. I was just going to take another course and her mm. sister did animals. And I was like, wow, why am I talking to dead people? I could be talking to animals. <laughs> yeah. This so is my jam. I, made, I, talk to, I talk to animals all the time. I'm with the yeah, animals all so the time. Yeah. I took a course with animal communication and I thought you could just talk to animals who had passed over like mediumship made sense to me. You could do it with animals too. Sure. No, 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 no. You can do this with living animals as well. And I was like, hold the phone. <laughs> so here I am almost four years later, still, still taking courses. But while I was a vet tech, I did utilize the things that I learned to just explain to the animals what tests we were running and why we were running them and why we needed x-rays and what their next step might look like. Like, yeah, you're in this shelter, but at the end of the day, someone's going to take you and you're going to go to a foster home. So I mm -hmm. made the leap officially out um, when I felt like I had been a vet tech for over 10 years. And I was like, I think that I could make this a business and help other people understand that there's so much more to the animals. So I'm still like per diem at that place that I worked at. I go there sometimes, but yeah. I was like, I want to do this full time because you can heal your animals so much and yourself through animal communication. And I, I loved being hands-on with the animals, but on top of that, after 10 years, my body was like, let's take a break. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a similar ish story, maybe it, not the fear part, but just like I, was chatting with people who are kind of like in the medium kind of world and um, experience spirit in certain ways and spirits in certain ways. And I was just super curious. I wasn't like fully all in, but I wasn't like, that's not true either. I was just kind of like, what is this? Yeah. And I, it kept being brought up over and over animal communication. You're super connected with nature, animal communication. And ever since I was a kid, I was like super like, I don't know. I don't have vivid, vivid memories of when I was little, but I would pretend that I was chatting with the animals all the time when I was a little kid. And just like I was tweeting at birds, like I was just like, That's you know adorable. what I mean? And just like engaging with them in, in fun ways. And um, and so there was a part of me that's like, oh, yeah, I could totally see that. But I didn't know anybody who was doing that. And so I was right. like, OK, I don't even know where to start here. I ended up taking or working with somebody. Originally, I just like got a reading by somebody who's an animal communicator. And I had a dog in my life at the time. And she was, you know, saying some things that like, no one she wouldn't have known. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, they'll do that. that. They'll tell like, you I business. Was, my mind was blown. I was like, how do you know this? <laughs> they'll um, spill the tea. <laughs> yeah. Scout was her name. So Scout was spilling yeah. all the tea about <laughs> things that I was like, damn, <laughs> but you know she she's all good she was um doing her best to just get me on a path that was more aligned for me that was kind of yeah. her main purpose is helping me kind of realign but it was like after that point that I was like oh I could do this too and it just kind of I don't I don't I didn't go as far as you did now it's just something casually that I sometimes do but I remember the very first time the person I was dating at the time sent me a photo of a cat. She's like, what's this cat's name? And I was just like, the, a name popped in my head immediately. But I was like skeptical that it was right. And I was like, does it start with an M? And she's like, yeah. She's like, what is it? You know what it is. I was like, is it Missy? And she sent me a screenshot 
of her or like a video of her and her sisters freaking out that I like knew the cat's name. Oh, that's so cool. And that was like the very first like tangible, like evidential experience that I had with that. And yes. I was just like, what is this? <laughs> like, that's so it's funny. so cool. That's actually yeah. really incredible. Like names are not common that like a lot of me and the communicators that I work with and like I'm good friends with, we don't always get names. Like people like, what's my name before they were adopted? Like, cause the animals don't typically care for that. So it's very uncommon for them to give a name. So good for you. <laughs> she, so this particular cat, like she had just been adopted and her owner was kind of being, he wasn't sure what to call her, but she had this name that the, um, that the rescue had given her. Yeah. So that's the name I picked up on. And he was calling her stuff that she didn't like, like stinky butt or whatever. I was like, her name's Missy. She doesn't like stinky butt. And that's so important to note too, then that your animal's names hold energy. So the nicknames you call them. Yes. Be mindful of what you're calling your animals. Like if you're calling your cat, your little demon and it's like biting your feet, try to call it something else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <genuinely>. For real. <laughs> For real. Were there any experiences where you surprised yourself like early on? Um, early on. That's a really good question. I think um, this happened not, this happened maybe two years ago. Um, so I really try to tell people that like, I can't diagnose your animals. I am not a vet by any means. I'm not a behaviorist. So full disclosure of that. But people will come to me like, is my animal, how do they feel in their bodies? And that I can tell you, like if they're feeling aches or pains, and then you take that information and you do what you want with it, go to the vet, whatever. Yep. Um, but I have a lot of animals tell me about their body. And I think it's because I have that medical background. Yeah. And I think that's um, when people say like, oh, if anyone's ever heard a medium say like when they show me this, this is what this means to me. Because you create your own symbols with the animals and, you know, the spirits. What means something to you? So they will literally show me an oxygen tank because I'm so familiar with it. So what happens is a lot of times will tell me, animals will tell me when they're due for blood work and um, animals will tell me what, like I had a dog not too long ago who had something that was bothering his mouth and it turned out to be cancer and they were able to remove it. I had a horse who the person couldn't figure out what was going on and the horse flat out said parasites. And I was like, listen, this is what he's saying. Full disclosure, I'm not a vet. He had parasites that were in his heart. So wow. they were able to save his life. So a lot of medical things. Also, I don't know if anybody knows who Bastion is on TikTok. Um, mm. He's a talking dog. Like, but he hits the buttons. He's oh, incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a session with him not too long oh, ago, man. and he told me he was due for blood work. And his human was like, no, no, no. Like, he just went. And I was like, okay, like, maybe I misinterpreted it. And she pulled up the thing, and it was, like, blood work in big red. <laughs> so that – also animals tell me when their humans are pregnant um, or when they're expecting – that happens a lot. <laughs> I promise you, animals understand anxiety. They understand depression. They understand these core childhood wounds. Like ch talking to a childhood dog, somebody's childhood pet, I will literally leave in tears every time. <laughs> like no. I, it's, they know everything that goes on in your body because they can feel it. Like even if you never said another word to your animal, they would, they would know. <laughs> so I think the, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. they'll bring up relationships or how people are treating you. I just had a session the other day with somebody who said their mother was a really angry manic and we weren't even talking about her family. And the dog was like, oh, by the way, she doesn't talk to her mom. Her mom's a really angry manic right now. And she wanted me to reassure her that it was okay to go no contact. And it was like wow. a revelation for her. And she felt really supported by that. And the dog wasn't even alive. This was a dog in spirit. So yeah, they know all the things. And wow. I think that's why for me, animal yeah. communication means healing because they're here to be our friends and our companions and let us put them in sweaters. But they're so much more than that. <laughs> yes. I'm more than my cute sweater, everyone. <laughs> yeah. There's a book. Um, any book by Tammy Billups is is about these soul contracts and your healing with your animals. Mm. Um, that's why like, a lot of times people who are like broken inside end up with like the pit bull who is in the back of the cage who won't come out. Because they're like, I'm broken, you're broken, yeah. and you want me to heal and get better. I can't heal and get better to you heal and get better. So you literally heal with your animals. I promise anybody listening, if there's something wrong with your animal behaviorally, just see what that emotion brings up in you and, and how, who in your life brings that up or what situation brings that up and work on that and see if it doesn't tweak your animal's behavior just a little bit on top of behavior and medication and all those things. Animal communication yes. is in, in addition to, not instead of all the other mundane yes. things. <laughs> I love, I love that piece. It's like, yeah. this is an added tool in your toolbox with your Absolutely. 100%. <laughs>
when you're connecting with an animal, do you do it the same specific way every time? Do you, does it yeah. vary depending on the animal? How are you making that connection? Yeah, it definitely de- it varies. It doesn't depend on the animal. It just, I guess it does depend on the animal, not the species, just in the way the animal wants to communicate. I can count on one hand how many times I've had an animal come to me the night before a session. Whereas when I did human mediumship, they were like in the shower with me. And I was like, bro, like, <laughs> I need you to not do this right now. Animals are so much more respectful. Um, and and yeah. it's like when I didn't even know that I was about to be with that person, like returning clients, I'm like, oh, like literally your dog was bothering me last night. Um, but I think it just depends. Sometimes like I ask for a picture. You don't need a picture. To, well, I don't need a picture to communicate. Um, but I love the pictures because it helps me feel more connected to them. And I use it to create a little bit of like a love cord between me and the animal. And that's just one of the many ways you can communicate or connect. But sometimes I don't even need to look at the picture and I'll have things like popping up. So it really just depends. Sometimes I like to do this meditative connect in and the animals like it. There there are some animals who are like, we don't got the time for this and who are just like here. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. they're like, got it, we're connected, it. it's fine. <laughs> Not so much the species, but just, I guess, the energy of the animal. And if the animal means business that day, or if they want me to have my energy managed first. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because they're like in your field. So, if, and if you're kind of, depending on what your day is like you know, they're yeah. feeling that. <laughs> so if I don't have my energy together, they'll let me know that they're here, but they'll be like, take a couple breaths before we tap in <laughs> <laughs> and connect. Yes. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> You've connected with like dogs, cats, the, the stereotypical pets that people have in their homes, but then also connecting with more like wild animals. Have you sensed mm. the difference there with those connections? I love connecting to wildlife. And I came into wildlife a little bit later, maybe like a year or two after I was connecting with domestic pets. Um, yeah. And the difference I guess I experience with them is the animals are definitely, the domesticated ones are here to help you heal, but they also have their own lives going on. And they also have their own biology that is helping them interact in the world. Like they're still wild at the end of the day, even, you know, though we put sweaters on them, they still have that in their blood. So, um, you know, whatever with that, but the wild animals, they're so much wiser and they're a lot more connected into humans too. And they're able to give advice Mm -hmm. and support you and like wrap the, wrap you in like their little cocoons and pods in a way that like a domesticated animal can't always. Um, so they give very grounded advice and, um, grounded solutions. Whereas sometimes if I ask my dog for advice, it'll be very, be a very physical 3D answer. <laughs> Not too long ago, I went to the beach and I was like, does anybody want to come talk to me? Because I was super sad. And like the crabs came and they were so profound. And I felt so much better after I went there. So I think that's the difference that I feel. Also, wildlife will place themselves in your life and pay. I say pay attention to it because they'll place themselves in places of your life. You'd be like, oh, I just saw a hawk for no reason in this land. Why? Look it up. <laughs> really, look it up. Why are you seeing this deer for the 10th time this month? Look it up. <laughs> They're so yeah. much more connected to you than, than you think, even wildlife. That was actually one of the first things when I started kind of exploring all these different, being connected to different things, nature and mm. energy and like all these different things. It was looking up kind of animal meanings. And granted, like everyone kind of has their own um perspective and viewpoint on what the meanings are so like a common phrase is take what resonates and leave the rest whatever so yeah but I went down that path so hard because I was seeing all of a sudden animals were like all over the place and I was just like oh oh like it was always like in a very like I was having a very deep conversation all of a sudden like a snake went over my path and I was just like what's happening (laughs) like Yeah, yeah yeah um that's funny yeah, it is like pasta on the wall, right? Whatever sticks, take that and whatever falls by the wayside, ignore it. Because you look something up, there's going to be a ton of different meetings. But that's why you look it yeah. up because your body is going to know. Like you'll have a reaction in your body when you're like, oh, wow, this really resonates. If you could just, not you specifically, but if we look something up and we just remove our ego, we'll know all the things. <laughs> so much so. And if if there's anybody listening to this conversation that 
is wanting to create deeper connection with maybe the animals they have in their homes or maybe even just nature out and about on their walks, what would you tell them? Yes, I love this question. Mm-hmm. Talk to your animals. <laughs> talk to your animals like you would if they were like a seven-year-old roommate. Like talk to them. Um, but I would also say be more present with them. Like if your dog is staring at you and you're like, what do you want? put your phone down and go take the dog for a walk. Or if your cat is staring at you, put your phone down and just look at your cat. Maybe your cat doesn't want affection. Maybe your cat's like, hey, you've been scrolling a bit much today. Is there something else you could be working on? Like sometimes people are like, my animal's staring at me. I fed it. I walked it. I did this. I played with it. I don't know what it wants. Maybe it wants you to work on something that you're supposed to be working on. So I would say listen to your animals. They're talking Uh to you all the time. Also, I think this is um, something I would suggest for people. Find out what your animal is bred for, what is in their ancestral line, and try to give them some enrichment that involves that. Because at the end of the day, like I said, they're still wild. And that kind of enrichment will win every time. I can't tell you the things that animals ask for or ask to do because it's in their blood. (laughs) Yeah, they're like, okay, I need to herd something. Yes, I need to- <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's like their biology. They can't help it. And people are like, my dog won't stop biting my heels. I'm just going to put it in a crate for 15 hours. And you're like, no, like give it something oh, to baby. chase. <laughs> Nobody I actually talk to puts their animal in a crate for 15 hours. Just a scenario. Because people yeah, get yeah, frustrated yeah. and they're like, I'm just going to put them behind a gate. And sometimes it's that you need to be doing something and sometimes they need to be doing something. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. And I encourage people because anybody can do animal communication. Everyone can receive downloads from their animals and telepathy. Yes, it is a muscle and yes, you have to work at it, but you're doing it every single day. Animals are so fluent in telepathy and they don't have that, that human brain telling them that this might not be real. So to them, it's just natural. You have a thought and they're like, they got it. So when they're going to send you a thought, like take a beat and be like, oh, hello, Fido. You've been staring at me for 10 minutes. I'm going to put my phone down. What do you want? And just see what comes up. If you feel like you should be like maybe journaling or if like book pops into your head or like homework, gym, whatever you, whatever pops in, just go do it and see what happens. As long as it's of love, you know, Yes. (laughs) Well, your animal will tell you to do anything crazy. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) Which doesn't usually happen. Animals are all genuinely loving. There's some times where I'm like, oh, like after a session, I'm like, oh, because I feel like it's all in my chest. And I'm like, oh, it's like hurts so good because it's such big love. There's big, big feelings that happen in these sessions. (laughs) Sometimes I feel like my body's going to (laughs) combust. Yes. Speaking of sessions and different things that you do and offer, I would just love to hear more about that. And if you're excited about anything in particular that you want to share. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So I offer just, you know, regular animal communication sessions. You can do a small check-in. There's a 30 minute, 45 minute. Um, And you can ask anything. Um, A lot of people want to know how many animals can I do in the span. It really just depends on how much you want to say to the animal and how much the animal wants to say to you. I always suggest if you do come to a session, be willing to talk to your animal because they don't come to talk to me. If you say nothing to your animal, they will likely say nothing back. (laughs) Like (laughs) they don't come to talk to me. They come to talk to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also offer letters from wildlife. So if anybody's interested or wants to know like what wildlife might have to say about some issues going on in their life, you can either pick an animal and I'll call out that animal and see what they have to say or You can leave it up to me in the animal realm and I'll see who shows up. We write a letter together and then we send it to you. And I also, yeah. (laughs) And then because I was raised, I I say shelter animals raised me. It's something I'm incredibly passionate about. Um, I offer a really like, it's only like $22 to connect with your foster animal or an animal that you love in a shelter for anybody who works in a shelter or volunteers um, wow. or like really is interested in adopting week. Um, it's not a zoom call. It's a email, but you can ask the animal five questions and there's like an unlimited, you can tell the animal as many things as you want. Um, and I don't charge, like if you have a question or two afterwards, I don't charge for that. I just do it because I feel like, like I said, the shelter animals raised me and I feel like this is my way to give back to them and send like mm-hmm. set them up for success when they're in foster homes and help them work through some of their quirks or their behaviors or what they might want for their future family and for animals who are in shelters, just how to best navigate that situation. That's so that's, cool. I that's love probably that my, you my favorite that. thing that I offer. 
<laughs> That's amazing. I love that you've created your own kind of special things because you know there's there's a decent number now as it's becoming more and po- more popular for yeah. animal communicators to offer the one on one sessions or and all that stuff. But I like that you've created your own kind of taste and feel. Yeah, kind of things. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then I offer grief circles once a month, um, free of charge. Just I can't promise everyone will get a chance to talk, but it's just a space that I wanted to create for people to come and realize that you're not the only one who is like still carrying your ashes, your dog's ashes around a year later. And that this, that grief is not something you just get over and that losing a pet, no matter how you lose it, good, traumatic, it's peaceful. It is a trauma in my experience. (laughs) It's a trauma to the body. It's a trauma to the soul. And I feel you heal in connection so that's why I like to bring everybody together and just be in that space. It's fairly new. I don't know how it's going to be structured yet, but I just knew I needed to do it. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so, so much for this lovely conversation and yeah. connecting about how we connect with animals and how we can connect with animals. And it doesn't have to just be what we think it is. It could be deeper than that and more than yes. that. So thank you so, so much, much Nina. Deeper. Yeah, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. What are you creating today? This is my favorite part of the podcast where you share what you're creating in your life. We've got Bella with a creation today. I actually got to meet Bella in my cross-country adventures while I was in Colorado. I had the opportunity to visit her home and see some of these creations myself, and I'm so happy she chose to share them with all of us. So here's Bella's video. It's your girl in Colorado. It's me, Bella. And I wanted to share with you my beautiful orchids. I wanted to create connection with you, girlfriend. I miss you. Colorado misses you. We hope to see you soon. Look at this one. Check it out. Okay, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. It's just a baby and it's going crazy. Yeah, how about that one? So I hope you're well, my friend. Come home and see us. I'm going to give you the long shot. So happy spring to everyone. Thank you for sharing your creations with us, Bella. All of those plant babies look so happy and they also seem to bring you so much joy. For those of you watching, you can share your creation on the podcast as well. Your creations are your moment to moment choices. So you can share whatever choices you're making in your life. Thank you for co-creating the Empowered Creator podcast with us. Whether you participated in the empowering activities with wit, moved and grooved to the music, took note of the perspectives and questions posed by guests to reflect on later, or submitted what you're creating in your life, this podcast is what it is because of all of us, a beautiful, collective, creative effort. If you'd like to be featured during the What Are You Creating Today segment, Submit your creations to Empowered Creator Podcast at empowered-projects.com or via the form on the podcast webpage. There is no creation that is too small. Your creations are your moment-to-moment choices. Lastly, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow, and share to help this podcast reach even more powerful creators. See you next time.